Hi, my name is Bhageshri Savasachi and joining me today are two hearing experts, Dr. D. Domingo and Professor Raj Shekhavad from Flinders University. On the occasion of World Hearing Day, which is celebrated on March 3rd, I thought we should talk a little about one of the most common hearing ailments people have, tinnitus or tinnitus as it's called in Australia. Dr. Domingo and Professor Raj Shekhavad have done some interesting research about people living with tinnitus and its worsening effects during the COVID lockdown, which we'll be talking about a bit later. But first, I'd like to ask the experts, what is tinnitus and how does one get it? Bhagishri, thank you so much for having us here today. It's an absolute delight to be here. Tinnitus or tinnitus is the constant, annoying, ringing, buzzing, hissing sound in the absence of its external sound source. And often, tinnitus is usually associated with some kind of hearing damage. So most of the time, it's associated with some sort of a hearing loss. And there are various other reasons which could result into tinnitus. For example, majority of us in our lifetime will experience tinnitus at some stage or the other. It could be after, say, a nice night out with friends, a clubbing, a concert, after some stressful event in our lives, um, effect of medications and, and, and other things. So majority of the time it disappears on its own and it's not really a problem, which is a very good news. But for some people, it lingers on and it starts interfering in their day to day life, their ability to concentrate, sleep and do their daily activities of living. And that's when it becomes a bit of a problem. Right. And is there any cure for this condition? Uh, to answer this, that question simply, we don't have that silver bullet which can absolutely cure tinnitus, but there is a lot happening in the research space where we are, people are trying to come up with normal ways to manage tinnitus. And there are some existing ways in which you can manage tinnitus, for example, with the help of sound therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy. There are some research tools which are, which, which are available, which myself and Dr. Domingo are trialing further. So there are various options available for them. Right. And how do people cope with this condition? As I was telling you before, for most of the people, it's not a problem at all. It's one of that sound which is there in, in the background. But for those people where it's, 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 it has become a real big problem, now that's a bit of a challenging thing. Um, mostly, there, as I said, there are various intervention options available. It's a good idea to seek professional help. So it'll be really good for those who are really suffering from it and it's affecting their day-to-day -day life that they should seek out and, and, and get an appointment booked with an audiologist. Right. And um, tell us about the research you're con conducting about people with tinnitus during the COVID lockdown. All right. Well, as you know, the social distancing measures imposed to reduce the spread of the COVID-19 virus have had a huge impact on social interaction, financial security and healthcare access, just to sort of name a few. But alongside these stress factors, Many tinnitus sufferers were, were suddenly just thrown into isolation with this constant like ringing, buzzing, humming, hissing in their ears. And without their usual background noises or distractions, it could quite easily come to the forefront of their thinking. So become quite bothersome in these conditions. Um, and as Raj said, start to then impact their daily living like sleep, attention and overall well-being. So what we're trying to do with our research is implement a global survey which we're developing with collaborators from around Australia and the UK to really try and understand the true depth of this situation for tinnitus sufferers. We really want this survey to act as a platform to hear the patient's voice and to make them active participants in helping us understand the emotional and the functional challenges that they've kind of been facing through this time. And then we can actually use this information to shape downstream research accordingly so that we can improve tinnitus care. Wow, sounds great. And um, what are your findings so far? So the survey is set to roll out in a couple of months or so, but we do have some preliminary data from the UK, from, um, which has kind of showed us from another survey, which has showed us that around 33% of the participants reported that their tinnitus perception was actually worsened as a result of the pandemic. And this, again, was mostly due to increased stress and anxiety due to the current situation they were living in and also a lack of those background noises and distractions. 
What also seemed to pop up was reduced access to care was also impacting them, which is something we, really, we want to delve into and see how we can better the care. So what we're kind of then expecting based on this preliminary data is to see the sort of, sort of the same sort of trends coming up, but we really want to, um, we want to get as much participation as possible as we can so we can capture the big picture and use it to then direct new research, again, aimed at improving care and also understanding what a patient wants to improve care. Wow, that sounds like really um, a good project to work yeah. on. And, um, <laughs> and on account of World Hearing Day, what special message do you have for everyone? Now, Bhagavishri, um, our hearing is very precious. Sometimes we don't even realize, you know, the moment we get up in the morning using an alarm clock to uh, driving a car, taking public transport, work meetings, entertainment, socialization, a lot of these things are actually hearing dependent. So it's extremely important to look after our hearing. You'll be surprised to know that there are 3.6 million people in Australia who have hearing problem. And out of those, 1.3 million sufferers have the hearing loss which could absolutely be prevented, which is a staggering number. So I, I would say that on the name of entertainment, we should avoid exposing ourselves to dangerous levels of noise, which could result into permanent hearing loss. And once our cochlea or the hair cells which are there inside our cochlea or inner ear, once they are damaged, they're gone forever. So let's just protect them and enjoy this magic of hearing for the rest of our lives. Right, right. All right. Thank you so much for your time and your very expert opinions and telling us about your research. Thank you so much for joining us today. You're very Pleasure. welcome. Bye.